Welcome back to another cooking video. Today I'm going to show you how to make caramelized onions. Now, I really hate those recipes where they add sugar to caramelized onions because you don't need to add sugar to caramelized onions. These things are inherently very, very sweet. I know you're thinking, sweet onions? Is he crazy? Well, no. Once you get past the raw harshness, there's a lot of sweetness inside an onion. And when you cook it for a very, very long time, you get rid of that harshness and you're left with just that intense sweetness that an onion has naturally. So when I cook it for four hours, it turns into something that's caramelized, but not burnt because when you burn it, it becomes bitter. So imagine something that's nearly like candy, tastes like intense onion, but very caramelized. And that's what we're gonna make today. Now. You're only going to need three ingredients for this. Onions, obviously, lots of them. A little drizzle of olive oil. Well, it's quite a big drizzle, but since we're doing a massive pot of onions, it's a small amount of olive oil compared to the amount of onions we're doing. And a little bit of salt to season. So, get your ingredients, let's get cooking. Let's go. Okay, let's get going. For that, you're gonna take an onion, roll it on the cutting board, and then cut the top and bottom off, then slice it in two, and then very painfully peel off the skin. It's always very annoying to get this off, but you just have to get through it. Just do it as quickly as you can, and try to get all of it. Now to chop it, you're gonna chop it into a rough chop. You don't have to get very thin and precise because as you cook it, it's gonna cook down and become very thin and jelly-like and mushy. Now just chop it like this, and then once you get towards the end, flip it forwards and carry on chopping. Once you've cut it, you're gonna cut about eight large onions, place them into the tray, and then transfer them over into a large cooking pot. Now you're gonna want a large cooking pot because they're gonna reduce down a lot. So you start off with a huge amount of raw onions and they become a very small amount. Once you've got all your onions inside, then you're gonna to wanna to add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Try to get a good quality olive oil. And then you're gonna start the cooking on medium heat. And then as we start cooking about hour one or two, you're gonna reduce it down to low heat. Now always keep an eye on this and make sure it doesn't stick on the bottom. You're gonna to wanna to take a spatula and look at the bottom of the pan and move the onions around to make sure they don't burn or anything like that. If they start to burn, you're going to add a lot of bitterness into your onions and that's very bad. If you see any burning, remove them out and clean the pan and put them back in. But if it's just a little bit of browning, that's what you kind of want. You want to move the onions around to make sure that all the browning comes off the pan and into the onions. So this is about hour one. They're starting to become very translucent and cooked, but they're still not brown. And towards hour two, you're going to start seasoning because you don't want to season at the start. Since if you season at the start and then you lose a lot of liquid from evaporation, you can end up with very, very salty caramelized onions. So I like to start seasoning around hour two. This is what hour two looks like. It's a little bit more brown, but not fully golden brown. It's just starting to get color. And this is hour three. It's gonna get a little bit more bolder and the taste is gonna be a little bit more developed. Very good at this stage. But what we're looking for is hour four. This is where it starts to get really amazing and it's just like, super bold flavors and just intense and just awesome. Okay, so we just finished cooking our caramelized onions. Now, what you may not know is we've basically cooked four different things. At every hour, they're a different stage of caramelization, a different product essentially, which you can pack up and store. Now you can store these for three to four days in the fridge. Now if you vac pack it and store it properly, you can extend that a little bit further, or else you could freeze it for three months, and then you could always just add a little scoop to whatever dish you make. Now, the first one is basically just cooked onions. There's very, very little sweetness to this and nearly no caramelization. I think we're all pretty familiar with cooked onions. Now the second one, at two hours, it starts to introduce a little bit more caramelization. This could be used for, it doesn't really have that many applications. Maybe if you wanna make a soft onion soup where you have some cream in it, this could go in there. You don't wanna to have too much caramelization with that kind of dish. Now at three hours, this is where it starts to get a bit more interesting. We have a little bit more caramelization, quite a lot more, and it's a lot sweeter and it has a lot more onion flavor to it. Because as we dehydrate them, because we're evaporating with water, we're left with more onion. So the onion taste becomes more intense 
and much more pungent and strong. This, four hours, this is where the magic starts to happen. At this point, it becomes a bit mushy. There's not individual pieces of onion. It's more of a mash, but it's super caramelized, super sweet, and super intense. Now, when I say super sweet, it can still be added to savory dishes. It's not become candy, let's say, but it is insanely sweet for onion. And it's just got so many applications. With this, you can just add it to any dish of yours and it just packs a flavor punch. Something you wouldn't be able to get if you didn't cook it for so many hours. And it just elevates your dish, whatever dish you have, to a much more sophisticated flavor profile because of this. And it's just amazing, to be honest. Okay, so what to do with your caramelized onions once you've made them. Now you can add it into soups, you can add it into sauces, you can add it into a lot of dishes. Uh, you can add it into a sandwich. You could add it into a burger. It'll be very nice inside a burger. You could also make a caramelized onion butter out of it. And then you could add that onto steaks. You could add that onto any cooked meats, or you could include it into a mashed potato, or you could put it on a baked potato. There's so many applications to this. Whatever you include this to will definitely have a flavor punch and it will really be, it will elevate the dish for sure. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this. If you want more content like this, please subscribe to my channel and hit that like button. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Goodbye.